So I feel that we need to do a new intro for the show. Why? We're still not streamers or YouTubers. No, but I think we need to add more to our repertoire. No, we're not going to add what he said. No. I know what you're talking about. If you don't know, I ain't telling you. The answer is no. Well, no, I I was going to say, you know, welcome to Two Titans and a Hunter, a Destiny 2 podcast. Also, Outriders. Why Outriders? Why not? I, I think every other YouTuber's covering it. it every other mm-hmm. video on my feed from YouTube is Outriders Destiny, Outriders Destiny. So I think we need to update with the times and get with this program. I well, think we it, haven't started streaming Outriders yet, so adding that would be pointless. Yet, like that's going to happen. Okay, again, he's right. Like that's going to happen. I'm going to play Outriders. I love Outriders. I've played that. I've already put in over a hundred hours, and the game's not even out yet. Right. See, that's why, you know, and it's coming free to Xbox Game Pass on the 1st of April. Uh-huh. Yep. So I think we need to add it to our repertoire. Oh, maybe at that point, whenever it actually comes out. Well, no, because we can cover the pre-news now, couldn't we? So we could do uh, Destiny okay. 2 and Outriders. <laughs> so I think starting next week, we should do it. We can have like a subsection for Outriders. I mean, I've we're got, still a Destiny 2 podcast. You know? I've got one, one small, small flaw in your plan. You don't play Outriders. <laughs> no, that's a large flaw. This is more of a small flaw. <laughs> What's is small? that uh, this is going to rely on Respawn to bring us information or collect any think, of it. I think and that's Demon just never play. going to happen. I think Demon will play. The reason, to answer Demon's question, the reason it's on your feet so much is because it's another looter shooter like Destiny. So a lot of Destiny people are going over to Outriders when there's a, a lull in the Destiny content, right? So that's why. So if if I'm playing it because it's Destiny ish, right, uh, with the powers and the weapons and the loot and this and that and the other, I'm pretty sure Demon probably will too. I know I'm speaking for him when he's right here, but uh, yeah. that's that's your role so, here. Yeah, well, well, welcome to Two Titans and a Hunter, and I don't know what the the things are on the other classes. Don't know yet because I haven't even got into it. What are they? <laughs> what can, what uh, can we be? There's a devastator. Two Titans and a Hunter, or Two devastators and a what? Uh, a what, trickster. What? Welcome to Two Devastators and a Trickster and Outriders Podcast. But it's not just Trickster, right? Okay, so talking about a little bit of Outriders news since you brought it up, right? You know the flame guy. So, so, so when does Outriders when does Outriders come out? Comes out on the first, first of April. And why is the Drifter in Outriders? All right, all right, all why right. not? Also, what? I mean, I, I just I just went to the Outriders page and that guy there's there's a guy who's clearly the Drifter. Ah, I, mean, I you see. Can, you can you can tell me this guy isn't the Drifter, but I do not agree with you. Okay. Um, well, uh, everybody, everybody looks kind of like that at the beginning until you start to get your armor drops and everything, and then you change your appearance. That's the generic look everybody's got at the beginning. Also, because it's good. Drifter knows what's good. Yeah. There's, there's a Viking, there's the Drifter, and there's post-apocalyptic short-haired lady. Can't quite, <laughs> can't, can't quite which place, like, way? which is like, is an archetype, I feel like, but I can't quite place like a particular character. Uh-huh. Uh, well, I mean, uh, 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 the the end game, uh, Captain Marvel, right? Kind of looked like that with the shaved head, mm-hmm. a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so um, the 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 flame subclass, which I can't remember what it's called for the life of me, that actually during the whole demo has been nerfed, right? Because they said that class is so powerful <laughs> that if they didn't nerf it during the demo, then you know, you know we would play any of the other classes because exactly. they would all play the flame class and be like, guys, we need to test the whole game, not just the good parts. Right. So I like I like the trickster for the most part because you know the whole teleporting thing is kind of cool. Runs with the hunter a little bit. You're here and then you're not kind of scenario. But uh, yeah. So I also like the flame guy too, but I play the trickster for the most part. And then uh, my son was asking me, you know, the differences between them and. 
you know, which one he should play and all this and that and the other. And we went through all the, the details and I told him what does what. And then after that, they came out with the whole, oh, yeah, no, this this whole time the flame has been nerfed because it's the strongest end game class. And I'm like, well, there you go. Everybody play the, the fire, dude, you know, I guess, whatever. I really got off tangent. Stop me from talking. <laughs> Say something else. Okay. But I, th- I think we, I think we could do it with updating our intro, couldn't we? Really, seriously. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, it's been 113 shows, 112 shows up till now. So I mean, it. I guess, I guess every 112 episodes we should update it. <laughs> yeah. You can also change it as an episode by episode basis. You know, based on what we've talked about, we can go back and retroact retroactively do the intro, right? Yeah. I, but yeah. hang on a second. Right, let's have a go at this. Welcome to Educating Respawn, a Destiny 2 podcast. I knew you were a show where we discuss tips, tricks, and tools to help all Guardians understand, tolerate, and inform Respawn on all the latest Destiny 2 news, information, and his many opinions. Let's get into it. You were going to do that. That's why I said in the beginning. I knew it. <laughs> you think I'm inept and you're only half right. I knew you were going to do that. I, didn't, I don't think you're inept. The viewers think you're inept. Yeah, the listeners. The, yeah, the viewers, <laughs> the listeners. Who do we have? What are we doing? Oh, I forgot what platform we're on. Uh, we're on the platform of this week at Bungie from March eighteenth, twenty twenty-one. Why? Silly. Why are you going it's, it's into this week at Bungie? It's Cosmos platform. No, why are you going into this week at Bungie? You know we have the next structure. structure. Oh, Double sir, what? you you, you, you thoroughly believe we, we have a structure to this show? Well, I'd like to keep it slightly. Did he actually say structure? He's, that... you're, you're, you're sitting here like, you know, changing the intro up, and we're talking about a whole new new video game now. I mean, I figured the structure was out the window. So, I mean, I figured the people at this point, they don't care. The next week in Destiny, you could become humanity's chosen champion in the Proving Ground Strike. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, I mean, I suppose... They could care that maybe Braca Zahn, one of the many Zahns, in addition to Paula, is back on the arms dealer Nightfall the Ordeal. Paula Zahn, is that a person I could know? Mm-hmm. And and definitely no one no one really needs to know that you could form a pack and uh, you could begin begin the hunt as, as the Iron Banner and, and Extra Valor return to the Crucible. See, nobody needs to know that, but there's one uh, guy here. I don't think anyone's interested in any of that, right? I mean, no. No. Definitely no. not the Brit in the show. No, nope. no, no. Doesn't seem interesting. Okay. No. Nothing exciting next week. You know, it's just a normal week in Destiny for me. Mm-hmm. Nothing to talk about. So, nope. yeah, that's it. Thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with us. This has been our show. Uh, my deep apologies. And uh, that's it. <laughs> yep. Night Demon apparently wants to talk about Outriders. <laughs> Have you even played it yet? <laughs> You're talking about no. it. Have you even played it? Oh, okay. Well, there you go. No. I was only talking about it because, you know, all the other YouTubers are talking about it on my feed, and I don't want to see other stuff on my feed. I just want to see Destiny stuff. Ah, oh, so you want to do the thing you just said you don't like. That's cool. Obviously, you're being facetious. I know, but... You're not the boss of them. Yeah. yeah. YouTube algorithm is the, boss of, is the boss of them. Indeed it is. But we're not on YouTube, so we don't care. Uh, so anyway... Fun. So when is Guardian Games going to happen? Because I have a thing to say about that. Because I've been seeing a lot of that on my feed. And one thing you I have start getting disappointed in April. April is when you want to start getting disappointed. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing I was starting to say earlier, and then we went off on a thirty-minute tangent, is I'm hoping that Destiny learned from their last Guardian Games and I don't know. put the numbers right. Oh, because yes, if the yes, whole they purpose have. of the game is to find out you know, what subclass is the best and who likes what subclass the most, don't nerf the numbers of the subclass that's played no. the most. Sir. So no, as you have now, as you have asked questions about Guardian Games, sorry, um, Parody, were you going to say something? No, just, just he's wrong. It's not which which class is the, is the best or, or people like the most. It's which class shows up when invited to compete. Uh, that's indeed. all. Yeah. It's we, like... We it's like very... how- and the fifth person in a tuxedo gets turned away because they're not wearing a dress. It, it doesn't make any sense. You know, Neither do the let things. all the people participate. Don't nerf. No. Well, no, no. We're, we're letting you participate. And then you took your ball and went home. You were invited. No, and then you, you were said, letting us hard. participate 
when out the gate they're telling you, yeah, like one fifth of the work that you do is not going to count. Sorry, dude. What? Because no. there's five times more than you, of you. Yeah, which so, tells you right there who the best class is. We shouldn't even have a guardian game. Just give the trophy to the damn hunters. Well, then you should come and earn your trophy. This is Sparta, my friend. Hey, as we, long as they don't lure the numbers, again, I will absolutely we, participate. Just because we lured you into a tiny pass and then killed you every every to every last man doesn't mean that we're the better class. It just means we're motivated. Uh, that's not a thing. If anything, you guys are complaining about the hunters doing that with our shurikens and our grenades and no, this and that and the other. That's why only the hunters got super nerfed last week. Because Titan's complaining that, about, oh my god, there's shurikens in this round! This is how you pay attention to the show. They didn't get nerfed last week. They're going to yeah. get nerfed this week what coming it? up. We talked about so it So you don't week. even pay any attention. Yeah, we talked about it last week, but you don't pay any attention. So it's I coming. can tell you, as as we've got onto the discussion of Guardian Games, there seems to be, Bungie have listened, and they are going to break it down for you this time, for Guardian Games Strikes Hunters. So Hunters band together to take on the Vanguard Strikes. There's Guardian Game Strikes Warlocks and Guardian Game Strikes Titans, where you band together with your class to play the different things. Also, there's going to be Guardian Games Bronze, Silver and Gold. So melee and grenade abilities deal more damage and recharge much faster. Elemental damage is increased for Guardian Sources, and that's for Bronze. Guardian Game Silver is exactly the same. Um, but you get more power ammo available. And then Guardian Games Gold is health, shields, and recovery are increased, and kinetic weapon do more damage. So, so they are is this they are the last up. season medals. No, these are the new what do you mean last seasons? Because you just said bronze, silver, and gold, right? So how how do they what does that mean? Break that down, right? Well not, not what it gives you, not not what it gives you, but like I'm guessing, you there's going to be, I'm guessing there's going to be a new kind of way that they're working out the Guardian games. And if you if you get a, a bronze or if there's a bronze activity, that your melee grenade abilities deal more damage and recharge much faster and elemental damage is increased from Guardian sources. Uh, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure because it's only data mine stuff. And it just says Guardian Game Silver, melee and grenade abilities recharge faster, elemental damage is increased from Guardian sources, more power ammo available. Yeah, I figured, I, I'm just assuming it's one of those like, hey, go run strikes and you'll hit bronze level. Run more, you'll hit silver level. Run more, you'll hit gold level. Like, you know, it being a tiering thing, but you know, that's just a guess. Okay. Or, 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 you know, turn in, turn in eight bounties and now you're bronze, turn in another eight and now you're silver, you know, there being some progression. Because I, I think Guardian Games is like three weeks again. So I don't know if they'll do it like a week over week or, you know, we'll see. Yeah, because the way, the way it came out, it sounded like, you know, whatever medal you got last season, these are the perks you get this Guardian Games or whatever. No, no, no. Nope, last season doesn't matter, just like the real Olympics. <laughs> also, with um, talking about the Guardian Games, there's going to be a home stretch ceremony. Mm -hmm. And a backstretch ceremony. Don't know what they are. Is that where we get our back hole stretched out? Yeah, it's massage. like, hey, you, congratulations, you won first. Congratulations, you came dead last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've um. also released on, I think it's on light.gg, but the three um, class items. So you have uh -huh. the Lion's Pride mark for the Titans, you have the Phoenix Fire armband for the Warlocks. And the Cobra's Hood for the Hunters. And um, I was watching Houndish this week, and he was going over some of these. What are you looking these... at this at? Because I don't see these pictures. It's because I haven't just I, I, just want to see, I want to see the same thing you're looking at. Like that would require you know. me to actually put these in something for you to look at. Oh. Um, well, no, you don't have to. I, I was just assuming you were looking at a link or something, right? So Let if, if it's a picture that you just like scoured on the internet, don't worry about it. Yep, looks just like uh, Guardian Games things. Mm. One's yeah. red, one's yellow, and one's uh, mm, blue. Blue. Sorry, Ish. didn't scroll down enough. <laughs> so yeah, I was, I was I was watching a Houndish video this week, and he was going over some of the stuff for the Guardian Games that has kind of been data mined and leaked out. And 
Part of the quest, the game begins, is equip your Guardian Games class item, then collect laurels by defeating mini-bosses or lesser enemies with your grenades, melees or supers. You have a chance to earn bonus progress when you pick up laurels that match your class. The new Guardian Games Strike playlist is a great place to start. So it sounds like there's going to be a, a, a playlist. It's own little thing, yeah. It's own little thing. And maybe you, you can only go in if you are maybe there's going to be three different things that you can only go in as a warlock in one titan as the other and hunter as the other so that they match you up with the other classes maybe that's how they're doing it it good because i was sitting here thinking to myself like <laughs> you know for all of us that are in different time zones that happen to play this play the same class dude, that's going to be a pain to get people together you know well, i think it was something that we were talking about last year when it happened wasn't it that why can't they do this? Why can't they do something that would yeah. band the classes together so that we can, th th then we can do activities that it counts towards. I think maybe right. it, was, it was crucible, but they, it sounds like they have listened. Yeah. And, and well, they're not fighting, you know, it, it fighting each bad. other. They listen about not nerfing the damn numbers. That's my main concern, right? Is leave the damn numbers alone. Whatever else you do, I don't really care. I'll even, I won't even complain if yes, everything is like don't, ability don't based. No, no, no. no, no. Like I am compromising. I am making a compromise with Bungo, right? I if you this. leave the numbers alone, I won't complain even if you make everything like ability based, which is something the hunters are not great in, right? So Except for the, you know, shurikens and grenades and stasis and all that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Prior to stasis, sorry. let me let me rephrase. Prior to stasis, abilities weren't really a hunter's thing, right? But now, but now you have all the stasis, so he'll be fine. Yeah. So it, just just leave the numbers alone. All right. Just leave the numbers alone. It's all about. Leave the numbers alone. It's all about. So there's also an unnamed item in the database that looks like a shield with gold, silver and bronze medals inside of it. It looks like a kind of display case in the shield. And it just says display proof of your impressive exploits during Guardian Games. And then there, along with that, there's an objective to collect 500 laurels, five silver medals, five bronze medals, three gold medals, unspecific gold is one and platinum medals three. And this is part of the quest medal case. Unspecific or unspecified? Unspecified. Ah. Because I can't read. Well, I was just wondering if Bungie couldn't type. <laughs> no. We go through this all the time. I can't read. I don't think any of us can. So there you go. I've caught you up on some Guardian game stuff. Although you have got some stuff to tell us later on with your Respawns Report Roundup. Because that's back this week. <laughs> So yes, let, let, let's get back to this week at Bungie for the 18th of March, 2021. So at the beginning of the TWAB, they say they want to start this TWAB off by speaking about the tragic events from earlier this week. The violence against the A Asian American community in Atlanta wasn't an isolated event. Hate crimes against Asian Americans have recently surged across m major cities in the US over the last year. And everyone at Bungie stands with their Asian communities during this difficult time, and our hearts go out to the victims of this senseless act and their families. So, as you guys live over there, could you elaborate on what's actually happened? Because I, I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Well, I don't know what's causing it. I just I have seen a lot of it. Yeah, this is a specific specific instance, and we're not going to get in depth into this. But basically, someone went around to multiple places in Atlanta, gunning down Asian women. Asian American women at different spas and things like that in the Asian in the uh, Atlanta, Georgia area. Wow, okay, so, that's not cool. Not going to not going to give any more light to no. any of that. But the important part is, you know, Bungie is bidding together with others and you know asking for money to support Asian American and Pacific Islanders. Yeah, because yeah, it's it's been a growing problem in this country and I'm sure in other countries. Um, Bungie is pointing us to the I'm Ready Movement. I am Ready Movement dot org. That does, you know, raises money and supports for you know AAPI, Asian American, Pacific Islander women, well, you know, women, men, everyone, but Asian Americans. So, yeah, the, just, the only the only thing. terrible things happening and trying to stop terrible things from happening again. The only thing that I would add to what Parody is saying is that it, 
he he says it's 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 getting worse or whatever. It's actually in America, Asians have really always kind of been scrutinized against. You know, since they came to work, you know, way back in the day when railroads were still being built and that was a big thing, all the way up till now where they have different requirements to get into the same colleges as ever as everybody else. They they're still. I was going to say prosecuted, but persecuted is probably a better word <laughs> in, in America. It, it, it's not a growing thing. It's an always has been thing. And it, that does need to be stopped, right? Just let them have the same exact opportunities as everybody else without having to add extra requirements to it. That makes no damn sense. So. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So if you're, if you're feeling motivated, go to I'm ready.org. Yeah. I'm ready movement.org. Toss them on in their direction. And I think, you know, Bungie, thank you for supporting the API families and friends. Enjoy the TWAB. And Bungie has given, you know, they said they've donated a bunch of money as well because Bungie has a giant charitable arm that likes to do good things. Um, like bringing us the Grandmaster Nightfalls, which have begun, which is why you can't bring 16 people into them anymore. That's so sad. That we know of, remember? Right. Yeah, well, well we, know we, we know of. We, us, us mere mortals, cannot. Someone Yo, possibly... Frogs, DM me. Let me know. You, Please, you, you know they have a Discord. You could go to them. Yeah, but apparently they didn't tell their Discord either. That's what I'm saying. DM me. I won't tell nobody. I promise. Oh. <laughs> so one thing I wanted to kind of clear up is that I heard, who was it? Des Raven, Des Raven on the Guardian Hub podcast this week said that the the adept mods aren't dropping from the Grandmaster Nightfalls. So I thought, oh, well we've told people that this is a thing. I would better go away and investigate, and. I can tell you, Des, that they do drop from the Grandmasters. They are not a guaranteed drop like the chest is from Trials, but they do drop from the end of the Grandmaster Nightfalls. So there is a reason for you, Des, to go in there and get these things. The, you get the Adept weapons and you can get the new Adept mods. Like the fancy so you guys... the Adept big ones. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the, the Adept big ones. Ooh. And I have a video by Erol who goes over the new mod, the Adept Big One, and tells you how much damage it does do. Because 7%. It, it, it basically combines like the two mods that you can get, which are, is, I think it's boss spec and major, um, major spec in one. Yep. But he goes over in his video, which I will link in our show notes if you are interested. Because, you know, show him some Spoiler, love and go and watch his video. Like Don't just listen to Respawn. Don't just listen to Respawn. Just go and watch the video so you can get some good views on that. 7.3%. But have you got have you guys managed to start leveling up to going to Grandmasters? Are you caring about the Grandmasters yet? Yeah, I'm 319, I think. 13. Damn it. Why do I keep saying three? Not three. Ugh. 13. That's the top of the show. Numbers and math are hard. Um, yeah, not particularly. I've I've been running through uh, with Panoramics eighteen, desperately trying to get his Telesto Catalyst. As I've just finished my Telesto Catalyst, and now I'm never taking that gun off again. Uh, but he still cannot get it to drop. We ran another six or seven law sectors yesterday, and also uh, a reminder yeah. to everyone: if you're desperate look desperately looking for where the law sector is and you can't find it on any map on any planet, it might be because it's in perhaps a law sector you've never run before. Like the one where it was yesterday on the in the Vela's uh, oh what was the thing called Labyrinth Vela's Labyrinth V E L E S Labyrinth over on the Cosmodrome. Apparently, it's either new or I just never ran it before because had to look it up where it was because it just you know it doesn't show up the you know the flag until you go and complete the lost sector. So if it's on a lost sector you've never done, locate the lost sector, finish the lost sector, come back out, then the flag will be there. Then you'll be able to run it as a legendary one. So, tip for you yes. filthy casuals who can't find the thing that it's meant to be and you're going, did Bungie just not give us a 1300 today? No, they gave it to you. You just have to work to find it. Work to find it. Oh, and if yeah. you want to find a list of what Lost Sectors are going to be what each week or each day, then Fallout Plays had a video and a link to a calendar, which I'll relink in our show notes, showing you what's coming up each day for the rest of um, the season anyway. And in case you're not, uh, you know, don't feel yourself interested in go farming legendary lost sectors or uh, Grandmaster Nightfalls. The Iron Banana is coming back. Ba, 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 na, na. Next week? Monday? Tuesday? Yes. <laughs> 23rd, I think. 
I think like, Monday yeah. Monday at four PM respawn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're in Australia. So Lord Saladin has played a pivotal role this Wednesday. season with, with some strong opinions. I've seen him on the table. I have not listened to a word he said because um story is silly. You've had you and, and, and and yeah, pretty much that one. And he has ongoing threats at the end of the Vanguard's facing. And even as we battle wage through the even as the battles wave through the system, the Iron Banner competition must go on. Because just like Guardian Games, it's important when there is certain death, you must continue to celebrate the ways of the Guardians. Was that the Guardian game? No, that was the Christmas thing, wasn't it? Eh, whichever it was, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, what are the holiday events? But we're gonna have have a time to have some fun and cheer. So we get Iron Banner and Bonus Valor next weekend. Next week. Gosh. Trials has me all messed up you, now. You say it like, like it's a big surprise. You always get Bonus Valor. And is it Triple Valor at the weekends, isn't it, normally? Yeah, allegedly. I mean, just because we normally get things doesn't mean we're actually going to get them or it'll actually be there. Or it'll yeah. actually work. Sorry. I don't want to give that up. Also, it's a surprise <laughs> to me because you know, paying attention is hard. Yeah, but Iron Banner's back. You've got your solo. You got your solo queue. Got your non-solo queue. You can get stomped with friends. Go go stomp with friends, or just go in solo and hope that the trials guys on your team and not the other team. And remember, please control those zones, and also throw grenades. It's not just a mayhem thing. Who else said that? That has to be read somewhere because somebody else said the exact same thing. I direct you to the last sentence of the TWAB for the Iron Banner oh, for this TWAB. week. That makes a little more sense. Yeah. And now, and now we have respawns. Uh, important we new be, information. Before we get, before no, we get before to that, I was just going to say, I was just going to remind people that with the Iron Banana, don't forget you can pick up four bounties each time on each character to get high-powered stat rolled armor and high-powered uh, pinnacle gear as well. So. If you are wanting to do the Grandmasters, this is four bounties that you can do four by just going into the Iron Banner and playing and boosting your level up. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably also Great worth seven. reminding everyone that they auto completed that heavy ammo quest. So if you gave up on the quest last Iron Banner and said, I'm never getting heavy ammo kills, they've auto completed that for you. So now you can move on to whatever was next. Did Something you do a parody? Uh, I was halfway through. Oh, actually, no, I had just finished the heavy weapon kills the day before they said we're going to auto-complete it forever. So did either one of you finish it? Because I didn't even try it. Because yeah. last time I did yeah. it, they gave me shaders, and I was very upset. Yeah, I finished it. I did was they finished give you it. Quests. Yeah. I don't remember what I got. It's not about what I get. It's about doing it and having a quest done. Yeah, and absolutely doing about what you get. We're loot chasers, dude. That's the whole point of us. Uh, no. The whole point is to have an objective and complete the objective, then feel good that you've completed the objective. Nice. I suppose loot's a thing too, but really, I, I think it's time to swap out my like 18 season old Iron Banner armor for new Iron Banner armor, because I realize I can't put the new elemental mods on the old armor, so I'm going to have to switch it out and master work my second set of armor in this game. I finally have a motivation to do so. It's not the sunsetting, it's there, there's new passive mods well, I can put it's, on. It's but a I, I like form of sunsetting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, true. I mean, former sense any, but honestly, I, I don't expect things just like I don't expect the 10 year old operating system to support new technology today. I don't ex expect the Iron Banner armor that I don't even know when I got it, how many seasons ago, because it's Somebody been like had work. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it has been, I can't even tell you which set it is, but it's been like probably two years. It, it's been a while. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't expect that ancient armor to support the new stuff. Which is why I have half a set of new stuff waiting for the Siren Banner, so I can hopefully finish my uh, collection. You still gonna go with the whole samurai thing, or you doing the seashells thing, or what's what what, what what's your game plan for the new set of armor, Buff? Oh, pr probably the exact same one yeah. until I can be a dinosaur, or until Transmog comes and I can go oh, remember what other sets I've completely forgotten about. Dinosaur. Uh. Anyway, not getting into that. Ah, uh, all right. So, so what is next on the agenda? What is next on the agenda? The clear, the clear eyes of tomorrow. Clear eyes, Ooh. full heart. Nerfed rockets. Well, the the rockets. 
supposedly have been doing the same amount of boss damage, but people were doing the math saying that it's doing half damage on everybody else, that it's not supposed to be doing half damage on. And Bungie addressed the boss damage issue, but not the everybody else issue. They addressed the mini boss issue. Yeah, well, that's this. That's what I was talking about. That's what they addressed. But everybody's complaining that all non-boss enemies are also taking half damage from what they're supposed to. So anyway, and what's this? What's this from? Like all the streamers, all the everybody, you know, hey, from what from the reason I'm based. Say what? What weapon are you talking about? Oh, I, uh, Eyes of Tomorrow, Rocket Launcher, Raid, DSC, yada yada, etc. Yep. Yeah, remember, you have to tell people that might not even know what you're talking about. Uh, so, okay, so if that's the case, then yep. the Raid Rocket Launcher from the new Deep Stone Crypt Raid um, was purposely designed such that it won't do a whole lot of boss damage because Bungie is desperately trying to avoid another freaking... Um, uh, what was the rocket launcher D one? Gallahorn, yeah. They're desperately trying to avoid another Gallahorn situation, right? Although it's not the same situation because it's way easier to get than the Gallahorn. So whatever. Uh, and what they did is they purposely made it do half damage to bosses, right? While legendary rockets are doing full damage to bosses. So legendary rockets are better against bosses than a freaking exotic. Whatever, not getting is into that. Perk, is that a perk on the gun that does less damage? Why do they do less boss damage? Uh, the, the gun overall does less boss damage because they didn't want it to to be the be all end all uh, rocket launcher for everything like Gallowhorn was in D one, right? But it's supposed to have normal damage for everybody else, right? Normal rocket launcher damage as it's supposed to have. That wasn't nerfed, but. After all the rocket launchers got a buff to their damage, right? All of our legendary rockets got a buff. All of our, all the rockets got a buff, even the other exotics. It seems that the Eyes of Tomorrow did not receive that overall damage buff. So it is still doing 50% of what it should be doing for your rank and file enemy, right? And people were saying it's also doing less damage to bosses, right? Turns out that it's not true. It's not doing less damage to bosses. It's doing intended damage to bosses. So that has been addressed by Bungie saying, nope, that's that's not a thing. That's intended. But uh, the mini boss damage was supposed to be full damage, which it also wasn't. And that is what Bungie is addressing, right? So they're going to fix it. So it's doing the appropriate amount of mini boss damage, but they still haven't addressed it not doing full damage to rank and vile enemies. That's what I was referring to. And don't they say that it's working as intended? For bosses, not rank and file. It's working as intended for boss enemy. Unless there's something in there that I haven't seen since, you know, a few days ago. So let's see. Oh, same text, I assume. So yeah. yeah so, in, so in the next hotfix, 3.1.1.1, they are increasing the, mini, the damage to mini bosses, which was taking less damage. And mini bosses are like, you know, the things you find in the lost sector. Majors, um, yeah, and uh, one particular strike boss that we'll get to in a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it's like the big boss baddies like Shanix, like you know, raid bosses, you know, it's doing what are you saying? It's doing the damage it's meant to do to them. It's you know, there's it's not bugged, it's working as intended. And rank and file enemies, they don't say anything about so, um, yeah. kill rank and file enemies with different things. <laughs> well, I mean, the whole point of the rocket launcher, right? And this is the perk, right? When when the volley kills a group of ads, I forgot exactly how many, it's like three or more ads, right? Your next volley does extra damage, right? Well, if the rocket isn't doing the intended amount of damage, right, it's harder, I'm adding an ER, it's not necessarily hard, but it's harder to kill a group of ads, right, to get the perk to proc for your second volley, right? So... Um, that's why people are upset that they did not address that. Hey, Bungie, this is a thing. Why haven't you said anything about it? What's the story? Well, you don't know. Bungie still hadn't told us. So, you know. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, so the weapon's capable of tracking and firing multiple targets simultaneously. Killing four or more combatants in a single volley increases the damage for your next volley. Yes. Okay, so, yeah. So if you don't get those four kills, you don't get the damage increase the next go around. And uh, if, if you've been struggling to receive the Eyes of Tomorrow and going, I've run this raid a billion times, why am I not getting it? 
Well, the, uh, <laughs> the PLBR is uh, we've got an upcoming uh, fix, and again, 3.1.1.1. Uh, basically, they were counting your raid completions per character, but not per account for the bad luck protection. Yep. So they, they've collapsed all of your account's raid completions into a single number, so bad luck protection will properly apply no matter which character you run the raid on, and this will apply retroactively. So if you still haven't gotten the drop yet, uh, you'll have, you know, your drop chance will be corrected, so you should be close to 100% or, you know, they do say... Uh, eventually you will get to hundred percent or if you finish the raid, you will get this or, you know, if you, uh, it, does it come from the final chest? Does it come from any chest in the raid? Whichever chest it comes from, you will eventually yeah. have hundred percent chance it's of getting the item tomorrow. The it's, it's what you get for killing the boss, not opening the chest, but yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, so eventually if you kill the final boss, you will eventually get the eyes of tomorrow. Just yeah. keep trying. And if you've run the raid a whole bunch of times, don't, don't, don't today. <laughs> don't, as you hear the sound of my voice, run around and do it. Crow Dad, Pale Rider. Wait, <laughs> wait <laughs> until wait until update 3.1.1.1. That's three ones. That's a three followed by three ones. Wait till that comes out. Then do the Deep Stone Crypt. Then you will have, you know, your bad luck protection will be properly protecting you. But yeah, so half of our raid team on the PC still hadn't gotten it until recently. Now I think all of our guys have it, but they were so mad. One of them actually stopped playing for a month because of that drop not dropping the way it was supposed to. I felt so bad for him, too. But yeah, now now hopefully all those that don't have it go out, farm it, so you should have better quote-unquote luck now, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Bungie says you, know, you will get to 100% the more you run it. So if you've already, if you're already 40, 50, 60, whatever runs in, you know, if you're 30 runs more than your your best friend who's running got it day one, uh, you should have a pretty good chance now. Not no, now, that, that doesn't the count for runs that you've run during a week where you've already run it once. Like, so that sounded confusing. If you've run it on, let's say, your hunter for that week, and you've run it 10 more times on your hunter for that week, the other 10 runs don't count. Only the one run that counted actually counts towards the drop protection. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so basically what was happening is if you ran it three times each week, you would each of your character would have one for the bad luck protection column. You would have one for the characters. But as now a, as opposed to down for the patch, yeah. If you run it yeah. one character, yeah, you'll have three. So, you know, again, it was just taking if you would run the raid like on different characters every week, they were each progressing their bad luck protection individually. Mm-hmm. So now now it gets, you know, progressed as an account like it should have. Is not intended. That's actually kind of cool. That. So who who would win in a in a fight of Rock'em Sock'em uh, robots? Have you ever thought about that before they mentioned it? By the way, because they didn't even think about it. Right? They're like, yeah, us neither. But how many people have actually thought about who would win between you know, Athydra and uh, Taken and Captain? Captain? Yeah, as an example, right? The example that they gave, but like. In general, at all, <laughs> that's never been a question in my mind. Who would win out of, you know, Varix and I, I don't know somebody else, anybody else? I, I think about that sometimes, especially when you see them fighting each other in in various planets where you see the two the two races go at each other, or when the Fallen and uh, Cabal fight each other on uh, EDZ. See, and I it, 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 it's the captain. captain. As soon as I get there, they all point their guns at me and forget what they were squabbling about. <laughs> and I still say the Taken Captain has it because that Thyder can do whatever he wants, and the Taken Captain would just teleport away, and then you're good. Yeah, but... definitely. So, what are you talking about? Just elaborate. Can you be more specific? So, Bungie yeah, and the Twab has a Rock'em Sock'em. You ever sit around debating who'd win a fight between character celebrities or community managers? Yeah, neither do we. Except today, when we asked to let us know who you think would win in a battle to the pain. Not to the death, but just to the pain. Who is the baddest baddie? The robotic chicken wyvern? And their full-on yeet attack? Or the formidable taken captain spamming endless blinding orbs of death? And again, Bungie, you've answered your own question. And they would like you to go on onto their Twitter, you know, uh, twitter.com slash destiny of the game that they have linked in the twab here and tell them. There, there's no video. There's no, like, you know, things. they have a picture of the, the wyvern versus the, uh, the the taken captain. And it's the taken captain. And it's moving on yeah. 
stats. I'm going to need uh, health pools. I'm going to need uh, attack damage numbers. I'm going to need... No, no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> if you've ever fought a captain or a taken captain, you know the taken captain's going to win, period. Yeah, no, he's always going to win. Because he'll dish out the damage, and every time you think you're going to hit him, he just teleports away, like you said. Mm-hmm. Receive he, no is, damage. he is the champion. He is the champion. He is the champion. Of the game. Anyway, there's a ghost in the shell. Yes. Are you, are you aware there's a ghost yeah. in the shell? Our team of players, uh, support experts, are hunting down odd issues and making sure fixes are being tracked. And, uh, you know, this is a report of things they'd like to tell you about that might be broken. So on, on Tuesday, they released update 3.1.1, so update 3.11. Uh, you know, it fixed many things, Risk Runner. Uh, friends on PS5, making Arbalest impossible to hit headshots, and uh, many, many Ascendant Challenge triumphs. If only it was impossible, unfortunately. He, it doesn't say impossible. They don't mean impossible. They just reduced, not even heavily, I would say, but they did reduce uh, the aim for Arbalest. 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 It's got a T at the end, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Destiny Fun Police, I think it was Destiny Fun Police put out a video on the Arbalist headshot ability, and it was basically like, no, you can hit the headshot, but it's not going to kill you. You mm-hmm. cannot lose a good day, sir. Mm-hmm. It unfortunately was discovered that this update caused last year's Guardian Games ghost shells to get replaced with another ghost shell that would uh, disappear when trying to equip. <laughs> so your last year's Guardian Games ghost shells are currently disabled until they can fix that issue in an upcoming update. That's awesome. So if you had your favorite ghost shell on and it's not there anymore, that's why. Uh, so an update 3.1.1.1. So I, I like how we have, just just put a dot one on the end. It'll be fine. You, you like saying that, don't you? That patch number. 3.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.1.
or the escape key, it'll remove the frosted glass and you can actually see your postmaster like you normally would. Mm -hmm. The locus of communion sometimes teleports around the final area in the presage mission. The you PS5. don't say. Yes, he does. I do say, and I don't even know who that is, but that's what it says. Uh, they they uh, all teleport. The they end teleport. Nothing has changed, like at all. Why? Well, no, no, but he he severely teleports. Let's let's put this in perspective. He severely teleports. You could turn up, turn off each of those um, flushes. Jump down one side, you see him hiding over the other side. You shoot a rocket that tracks, it goes beep, beep, beep. And, and as it gets to him, he's there Sorry. in front of you. The rocket what? has gone nowhere, and he just slams you. It, it, it goes what? Do it again. Beep, 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 beep. No, no, it's not the same. It is the same. Anyway. What's not the same is it if is you turn on the PS5's 3D audio, it can make the Destiny 2 audio sound muffled. The Ultra Combatant's health bars are displaying in colors inconsistent to their icons and to other more powerful enemy types in multiple colored blind modes, so good luck and Godspeed respawn. Yeah, well, you know what? They still haven't fixed the pink health bars to be pink. It's still yellow, bungo. It's been... How many years has it been that you, you, you made the change and you haven't fixed it, bungo? Right? When you have yellow... Colorblind mode set, right? It's supposed to give the bosses pink health bars instead of yellow. Guess what color they are, guys? Can you guess? Can you guess what color they've been? Yeah, they've been yellow. They've been yellow the whole time. So if you're playing on PC, uh, your frames per second and crashing issues uh, are happening and Bungie's investigating. Mm hmm it's intentional that the Weekly Strike playlist singe is randomized, meaning that some singes may not appear as often as others. And this is likely in response to everyone saying, uh, we haven't had an arc singe since the dawn of time. And we <laughs> haven't, because randomization is a fun thing. Good, because I the hate my arc culture. Mm -hmm. The Insight Terminus Nightfall Triumph is in counting progress. Random lines appear on Woken character faces where shadows should be when on the PS5. The heavy ammo spawns under the distant shore map. So Wait, yeah, uh, if you're playing the distant shore map, <laughs> heavy ammo spawns under it. So good luck. Solar scar is translated as solar scar in Spanish ES. And Guardian Games class items no longer honors the 2020 placement. So respawn, the, the slate has been wiped clean. Yeah, there's no more embarrassment for you. Your third place. Oh, it was never embarrassed. I've I've been angry, not embarrassed. But it's also a bug, no, so then I back. Embarrassing. It's uh, also a bug. <laughs> the, the Gambit post game carnage report screen um can't show the second screen of stats, so you just don't get to see those. And the player's entire stack of legendary shards appears to be added their to their account when removing or socketing ruins of the hammer of proving. So if you're seeing your entire legendary shard stack move around, um, yeah, it's it's fine. It just appears to be, but uh, we presume they're still there. So those are the issues we know about. The other issues are in the known issues list. Go look at those if you see one that we didn't talk about here. Yep. And now we have movies and artwork, and it came you know it came from down here as a squad of nine because you know it's almost going to make a squad of nine video this week and win. And then there's, you know, a man thunder crashing through all the world. And beautiful artwork of a man standing over uh, just just a pile of pile of skulls as wow. Team Dino. Because dinos like skulls. Oh my god. Can we can we not I'm say still upset that they won? Yeah, very much. And then there's some Siva. So yeah, congrats to the artists, congrats to the movie winners. And uh, we're getting deep into the season of the chosen. Things are heating up and still have more to come. Next week a brand new strike is going live for season pass owners. Prepare to face off directly against the Cabal as the champion of humanity. So yeah, new strike, new thing. Yeah, and Cosmo loves you. Let's have a quick chat about that because that is going to be quite interesting, isn't it? Because strike. Yeah, yeah, but it's going to be the strike that kind of I think brings some clarity to some of the story that we've been leading up to with the Crow and going off and trying to protect Zavala with what happened the other week when he was nearly done in and we have seen that there was i think with where was it, it was um i think it must have been in one of the trailers for 
when it was the upcoming season, there was a shot of Zavala speaking to Keitel with Crow in the background in a kind of, I think it's in a Nessus area. It's in kind of a, a red cave kind of area where she's actually addressing Zavala. So there's going to be something coming with the story in that this week, which is going to be quite nice. And then once we've unlocked it for like season pass owners, it will then be put into the normal rotation next week for everybody else to use or everybody else to play in the strike playlist, which is quite cool. Do you think it's going to be the featured nightfall the following week? I don't think so because um, when does everybody else get it? Season pass holders get it next week, but when does everybody else get it? I thought it was a month after the fact. No, it's next week. It's a week. Well, what we are... can answer this. We can answer this question because yeah. if we look March at... March thirtieth. So yeah, March twenty third, it comes to season pass holders. The week after that, March thirtieth, the proving ground ground strike enters the playlist for all players, and it's the proving grounds nightfall. There you go. So, so I think that I week that means... might be the nightfall, but not this yeah. week. Yeah. Week, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if that means it will be the nightfall or just it can be the nightfall. Because yeah. I just say proving grounds nightfall. Three words, March 30th. Okay, cool. Uh and I've talked entirely too much, so now one of you should talk. No, you yeah, haven't absolutely. talked. <laughs> I haven't talked at all. What did you leave off? Uh at, at the end of the twop. So so we're done. Oh. That's why I said Cosmo loves you because he does. Cosmo doesn't love anybody but Cosmo. No, that's not right. There is a topic that I wanted to kind of bring up with you guys, and I wanted to discuss it because I thought it was quite interesting with the new seasonal challenges that we've had. And you know you've got like 10 per week up until week four, and then we're down to eight, seven this week, maybe seven or eight in the in the following weeks. And some of them in, have been quite interesting, you know, go and complete the quest and do challenges with, you know, kill people with bows this week and complete the challenges prov- challenges proving completed so go and play like the battlegrounds and complete like hammer charges and things like that so you've got okay. these seasonal challenges and you've got like the the weekly quest parts of it and some of them you can save up so like you could literally wait until this week week six and do week one two three four five and six all of that kind of story content and catch up really quickly yeah. But what I actually found quite interesting is this week there is a Conquest of the Mighty. So you've got to complete any Nightfall the Ordeal Strike on Grandmaster. And I thought hmm. this is quite interesting because if I wanted to if I wanted to actually get into like doing the Grandmaster Nightfalls, which I kind of do, but it's always kind of towards the end of the season that I'm near enough to that power level because I'm, you know, I'm not fully grinding it day in, day out like some of the content creators are. But this week, six weeks in, I'm not at that kind of light level. And you're not, are you, Respawn, either? What do you need to be? I always forget. Is it 1330? 1325. Yeah, 1325 unlocks you. And I'm I'm at like 1315-ish as well. So I'm, again, nearby, but not there yet. But if you think about it, that's a hell of a lot of XP that you either need to put into your artifact or a lot of luck in getting the drops that you need from the pinnacle rewards. Really? And I was thinking about this, that maybe that they need to rework the seasonal challenges and they need to be quite open and honest with what they want you want to compl- what sorry, what they want you to complete over the the you know 12 weeks of the season and say like you can look at all these weeks and there are going to be certain nodes that are going to be already unlocked so you can see in advance so like at week one i could have looked at week six Mm -hmm. and it says conquest of the mighty that at some point i need to complete a nightfall the ordeal on grandmaster so that at week one that i've got it in my sights that if i want to complete all these seasonal challenges because you do get a really hefty um you get a, a if you complete the master of all, which is the seasonal challenge, you get a large bundle of bright dust pile, which is quite nice. And if you're trying to get to that, it says you need to do 75 of the challenges. Now I'm not sure whether that's going to be all of the challenges, but let's say if it is all of the challenges, that means that you need 
to complete this nightfall one. And if you can't get to that level this season anyway, because of that big 50 light levels gap and then get the pinnacle rewards, maybe next season it might be a little bit better because if everybody's starting off nearer the soft cap, it's going to be a lot quicker to get the pinnacles from like the first week and sure. get going you know, for 12 weeks. We might actually be able to get to the where they want us to kind of be. But I was thinking about this, like, and there's one that says, I think it was last week, um, acquire the salvages salvo um, and get the, all, no, I think that was the week before. So maybe it wasn't, maybe it was week three. The, on one of the weeks, it was get the salvages salvo, the, the, um, the ritual weapon for this season. And then there was one to get the um, ornament for it from a, a, one of the playlists. Uh -huh. And I was thinking, well, some of these things you kind of need to know in advance, because if this isn't something that you are, if you're one of these players that kind of drops in every now and then, say you played week two and you came back week four, you've you've done like a couple of bits on each of them. Say you're not coming back to either the end of this week or next week. You then see all of these challenges that you need to kind of do for higher level, or you need to put a bit more work into. You're kind of then you're then still in that fear of missing out that you might not get all the seasonal challenges done. Whereas if they were a list of the seasonal challenges for each week, and they're just like, just, I'm not saying reveal everything for each week. I'm just saying reveal the hard ones that, you know, in week six, we're going to ask you to do this. And it's completely I, I, grandmaster. I you're, you're, you're drowning on just a bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in, Sorry. That. Right. Instead of that. Right. If they're going to require you to do something like a Grandmaster Nightfall, as an example. Right. Why doesn't Bungie just say, hey, the last week, you know, before the season resets or something like that, we'll pump everybody's light level up to the minimum requirement. Right. You won't get anything extra, but you'll be at the minimum requirement so that you could, in fact, do the Grandmaster Nightfall. Right. That, to me, seems like a smarter solution, right? Instead of just having the light level, you know, them giving you the light level all the time, right? Obviously, you know, that might make some people angry or whatever. I'm not entirely sure. But, you know, at the very least, at the very end, you know, let's say you have a week before reset, you know, let everybody get the minimum light level, right? If you have higher than that, good. It's going to be easier for you. But... If you're sitting at 315 or 1315 or 1320 or 1300, right? Let Destiny or yeah. let Destiny, Destiny pump their numbers up to the minimum so they can do this since you've made it a requirement for a thing in the game. You know what I'm saying? But what, what I don't get with those Grandmaster Nightfalls is why do we have to grind to get to 1325 for then contest mode to be enabled? Why isn't it just you know contest mode is enabled and you have to it will knock knock you all down to this light level why isn't it just a very simple easier way of you know you could be at 1300 but the you have that the minimum light level ahead. no but what i'm saying is with, with the grand masters because it's contest mode enabled it takes yeah. off it's it's 1350s the the power of the the enemies and it takes off 25 light. No matter what, what you are above that, you can be the minimum requirement is 1325 to get in. Why not make it that it's maybe 1335 is the is the power mode, but it knocks you down to 1310. So the minimum requirement to get in is 1310. Anything over that that you've got with your ability, you know, your artifact or your your gear isn't going to make a difference but because it's a contest mode and it's a grand master uh, it's going to be harder it's it's, it's, it's exactly the same we're grinding light level to get to somewhere that is you know quite difficult to get to for it not actually to be recognized there's no point is there there's no right. difference between us going into something that's 1335 and being 25 it being not you know, 25 just what you're saying you could break it out even further just some arbitrary number minus 25 light level from that exactly. arbitrary number. exactly Any number. It does. yeah it does well i mean i think the minimum requirement should be like 1310 which is like the the hard cap bar sure. 
in in that fact it, it it factors into your artifact as well so you could in fact get to that with your artifact and um use your, your artifact for the extra bits if you can't get all the pinnacle gear you could have to get that with the artifact yeah but you know what i mean i got you yeah so it yeah. looks like and i think <clears throat> i'm sorry, sorry i was just saying i was i was trying to look up and see how many because I thought I remembered them saying like it's not every single challenge, so I found a you know a leaked list of challenges that I you know haven't cross references, so it may be not entirely correct. But it looks like there's hmm. seventy seven total challenges this season. So it looks like if you want to get the master of all, and you know for for doing quote unquote all of them, then you can skip two of them. Hmm. And you know so there's two that you can sort of you know not get done and you still get the master of all thing done. So. Take that I mean, with that a great sense. Result, and not be totally correct, but I, I feel like I remember them saying at some point it wouldn't be every single challenge, but the vast majority of them. So if there are, so I mean, now a bunch of these are like go do presage and go do this and that and the other. So there may be, you know, there, if one of them is like, you know, hey, go go flawless and trials. Obviously, no one's doing that. I don't think that's one go, of them. Go solo, presage, no. flawless, something. But it, it's very it's very similar to making a requirement for you to go and do a flawless in in trials. There are some players that have never. I mean, I've never done a Grandmaster Nightfall the ordeal strike because the, by the time I've always got to that power level, it's just been the end of the season. And I haven't had time to go and do it. And yep. if the, these seasonal challenges were meant to replace the fact that they didn't want you to kind of do all those bounties over and over again to to build up your bright dust because people were moaning you know they wanted an easier way to get xp and to get bright dust now this conquest of the mighty is four times xp and bright dust i would wow. not have picked that up if that was a bounty i would have picked something else up that, and, and let's face it this would never have been a bounty you would have had a lot simpler things to do bounties that i could have gone away and done to generate the the same amount of four times xp as what they're offering me there and the same amount of bright dust. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I could go off and do like last season, I would have been able to pick up X amount of bounties and generate the same amount of XP and the same amount of bright dust in theory for not doing that. That seems a hell of a lot of effort and work to do. And now I'm kind of panicking about doing all these seasonal challenges before the end of the season because i didn't know this was going to be a requirement i thought they were just going to be simple requirements as they've been over the last couple of weeks go and complete the story go and kill people with you know sniper rifles go and kill people with submachine guns simple things that you could have done when it was like bright dust gains yeah mm -hmm. i mean that's really other than tying the challenges to the table this season to upgrade it, the only real re reason to do the weekly is largely bright dust. I mean, yeah, XP too, but you know, sort of later in the season. Like I've, I've been playing the season very casually, and I passed a hundred on the season pass this week. Yeah, me and, you, know, you know, and I, and I haven't been, I haven't been killing myself I just did it like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, great. I play the game by saying what bounties can I pick up and what bounties can I go complete. Like I'm very bounty oriented. Or or, 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 you know, figure if I, you know, the week starts, I say, okay, I can do three strikes, three crucible, three gambit. I so I go, okay, you know, what, what has a double or triple infamy or valor or something this week? You know, so I focus on that thing first and go do a bunch of it, or the legendary lost sectors again, trying to farm the Telesto Catalyst for friends. You know, I'm very motivated by what's the thing I can do this week. So I, I get a lot of XP just sort of doing that, not because I'm, you know, going doing high level activity necessarily, but just, you know, in, inching my way forward. And, yeah, you know, we're like halfway through the season. And I've hit 100, which always, you know, feels good to get there. But yeah, it's also like, okay, you've hit 100 in the season. Now you have to go put in another half season of work. It feels like to go get to where you want to be for the end, you know, the end game, the the grandmaster stuff. Because I think I've stepped foot into one last season and just we got destroyed and go, went, no, this is stupid. Let's do the you know the next one down. The first one, in my experience, right? I, I'm not, I'm not a, you know one of these guys that knows anything and everything about the game, but usually what happens is I'll get on with usually stage two, uh, an old clan mate of ours, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll jump on together and we'll do the first couple to learn where the to learn where the enemies spawn, to learn where groups are, to learn this and that and the other. You got to learn the nightfall first. But after you've learned the nightfall and you get your gear down, 
it's actually easy after that, right? The hardest part is learning it, you know, where all the bosses are, yeah. what shields right. they have, et cetera, et cetera, right? So if you only go in the one time and you're going to get slaughtered, well, yeah, you're going to have a bad time. You're not going to... You're not going to do well the first time, dude. Unless you're some oh, death I... that knows everything about everything, you're not going to get it the first time. You're going to get your ass handed to you. Nor was, so, I, was I expecting to at all. Just to be yeah. clear, I was not expecting to have success the first time. Yeah. But yeah, no, you got to go through at least a couple times to learn it. And then you got your loadout down, and then you start farming it, right? Because at the end of the last season, uh, Tube and I were doing that all day, every day. Just, just, just to grandmaster to to farm uh farm golf balls and whatnot. See what I'm saying? So yeah. yeah, as long as as long as you've like learned it, it's not hard. And I'm talking to you specifically, but that's in general for everybody. Grandmaster, it's more intimid. It, it sounds more intimidating than what it actually is, right? So yeah, just, yeah. no, I understand that, and I understand. Yeah. But it yeah. it's the panic yeah. of I need to get my light to thirteen twenty five. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that could be a thing. I right? either need I either need to get my pinnacle do my pinnacle drops every week for the next six weeks and hope that I've got to that because I know I'm not going to be able to do what I've done in previous seasons to generate my XP on my artifact because well, I need to get like twenty light on that artifact at least which well, I, I have just about done in the last couple of seasons. If you're playing all three characters every week, which I know if you're a casual player, you're not going to be able to do, right? But if you're doing that, hitting that cap is not hard at all, right? It's really not. But if you're just jumping on every now and again, working on your one character, RNG better be on your side because you're going to have a hard time Hmm. getting to that cap. And the other one that I wanted to kind of point out is the one that was the pre-wives one, In It For Infamy that you have to go through five infamy ranks. Now, these aren't the sub ranks that you can get on Gambit. These are the big hard caps on infamy ranks. And they're not easy to do, are they, Parody? It's, it's quite a, a task when it yeah. isn't a triple or double infamy week. Right, yeah, I mean, that's 15,000 infamy points you're getting for each of those resets. Meh. That, that, is, that is a struggle. That is a slog. That's why I've got that stupid emblem with my infamy resets lifetime on it, because it's... It, it, it's an achievement I can feel proud of, just like your your Iron Burden kills. Now, granted, that's much harder, but that's one where I'm like, I've done this a lot of times, and it feels good because I enjoy it. But yeah, that's not an easy thing to do multiple times. And the other annoying one is the Apex Armor, Masterwork, a piece of armor. Now, for some people, that's really hard to do because there's a lot that goes into that if you are new to the game and you don't have the enhancement cores, the enhancement prisms, and the golf balls to actually get a piece masterworked Absolutely. sometimes it takes it takes you a kind of whole season to generate just enough maybe not even to get a golf ball and you've then got to you've got to do certain activities that you might not be able to do uh, as a solo player to get one of these things and if you haven't bought this season pass i know you get like one or two on the season pass if you don't if you're just kind of playing the game normally but you still want to do these seasonal challenges this is going to be one that kind of eludes you. So if you, if you don't get the Apex Armor and you don't get the In It For Infamy, you've then got to go for, I've got to do the Grandmaster. So where you were saying that you could miss two of these out, Parody, it also then puts a lot of pressure on making sure that you do enough stuff to get the Salvager Salvo and, the, and then go back in and get the ornament for it or the whichever one that is. Because... It, I mean, even now, I haven't even got that weapon. I, I've played a lot of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. The time commitment to do these challenges is—I don't know if excessive is the right word, but it, it's a serious time commitment just to get these things done. Even just to, yeah, it's definitely not something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even the time commitment—you have to—you have to not only have the time in, but also be willing and able to play a little bit of everything. Hmm. You know, it's not like you I can mean, just play things. your strikes and play your Vanguard stuff all season and be done with it. Like, you know, you have to go do like a little bit of everything to get, you know, even just for light level stuff, even just for pinnacle drops. You've got to do your three, your three yeah. games, your three crucibles, even if you hate those modes, just to get the, the light levels. Indeed. I mean, th- there are some things where you can, like I have done, 
waited like four weeks and then went and gone went and played Gambit so that I could knock knock about three or four of those um, challenges out all in one go. But then there are other things like like these other really impossible ones that were well, not impossible, but a, a lot harder ones that if I'd have known at the beginning of the season, I might have put, you know, more, might have gone and picked up a few more bounties to build up my XP on my artifact quicker or made sure that I went and got that pinnacle reward from doing the exo challenge that week or each week. I mean, I know I've missed a couple, but if I'd have known ahead of time that I needed to do a grandmaster just to get that challenge done in my, in my head, I would have gone, right. I need to make sure that I, I do these every week religiously without fail. And I just wondered if you guys kind of felt the same way, if it was something that was interesting to you, because I, I don't think I'm the only person that's probably thinking this, but no, I I agree with what you were saying. That's why I refer back to the conversation we had about Bungie just giving some arbitrary number, like you said, like the hard cap, and then subtracting twenty five or something. Mm. You know what I mean? Especially if you're going to make it a requirement, it, it needs to be something that's more obtainable to the less hardcore of players. Yeah, although I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, like the. I don't know. I'm of two minds because, like the 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 Grandmaster Nightfalls. I mean, with the adept weaponry, you know, Budgie's saying this is as hard as as going flawless in trials. Basically, you know, this is sort of on the same tier of we're going to give you the same kind of rewards for a flawless trials run. So you know that that activity absolutely end game. Mm -hmm. the, the weekly challenges, you know, I mean, they've always experimented with the bright dust. They've always, you know, messed with that every single season of how we get it, how we earn it, how much, how much is too much, how much is too little. You know, can you just sort of farm it? Is it just in big single drops like this? So I appreciate them continuing to tweak it, but I, yeah, I, I'm with you guys. I don't think this is the way to do it because it's just, it's like, it feels like an all or nothing. Like you get some fat of it. And mm -hmm. I do appreciate them tying it to a mechanic in the season with the table. But again, would have it have killed you to tell us how that you know any of these mechanic work, mechanics work at the beginning of the season? Because I'll be honest, sometimes like you, know, we'll talk about it and I'll get on and play and go, I don't remember what this mechanic is, or I don't remember why I should be doing it. <laughs> you, know, you know, going into the game and saying it's like, okay, now there's a table, now there's this, now there's this, now there's this. Okay, how do these all work together? How do these, you know, what thing, you know, what's my gameplay loop? What do I need to go do? to get, you know, build up hammer charges to go open these chests and this different activity to then go take to the table and then, oh, there's weekly challenges to get this done. Oh my god, and the hammer charges are such a pain too, right? Like, oh, oh, you want to focus this thing? We're going to we're gonna take five charges away. So you're telling me I got to go run enough strikes to pay to open a chest five times in order to focus one Ingram? What? Yeah. Yeah, so like you know, sort of like I honestly don't mind that. I really don't because that's part of the the quest, part of the season, and that's something you can kind of do over that dream period. That, that's a little high, right? But I, I, I mean, wish you would have told but, me. Like, I wish you would have told me at the beginning of the season, like here's how the gameplay loop. You know, walk me through the first little bit of it. Walk me through. Here's here's a loop you need to do to advance all these things. Because yeah. there was a point where I, you know, I hadn't really been focusing on the challenges. Like I've been doing them, but I hadn't been like focusing on them. Until I realized, you know, week two or three or something, it was like, oh, that's why I'm not upgrading this table very quickly because it's tied to the challenges. I had not realized that initially. I figured I was like, I, I, the table gave me bounties. I picked up bounties. I completed the bounties. It's like, great. You know, this is progressing something. Nope. Totally unrelated. Different thing entirely. So yep. I, I just wish, you know, sort of to, re to Nightteam's point, you know, at the beginning of the season, sort of tell me what you want me to do first. And then, it, you know, let me get on that loop and start working my progress towards it because now yeah it's like i almost feel like and again i don't care that deeply but i almost feel like i lost a week or two not knowing what i was doing not knowing how the loop worked the gameplay loop worked to get you know my table move forward or the thing move forward to have these things unlocked by this point in the season like yeah. there's still so much stuff i don't have unlocked because it's just you know i was sort of behind it and now i'm trying to catch up and go okay which which one thing okay i have to go to the cosmodrome and go run bounties in public events and what unlock that piece like a a place I normally wouldn't set foot. It's like, okay, now I have to go focus on these these little things here and there. So, yeah. So, the thing the thing that I'm complaining about, right, that I guess y'all don't have a problem with, but like, okay, so you want to focus one item that takes five, five hammer, whatever, right? 
Well, okay. First of all, let, let's think about the fact that when you focus that one thing that costs five, you're not even necessarily going to get what you want, right? So you're taking a lot of time to get something that probably won't be what you're looking for anyway, right? So yeah. keeping that in mind, right? You have to run X number of playlist activities to get enough gold to be able to go into another playlist activity to socket a hammer with said gold right and then each one of those has a minimum time right you like 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 the strikes you might be able to run through pretty quick depending on what strikes you get in a row right but the cabal things those are set dude you can't just like run through there and clear it in 30 seconds no because they have caps you got to get to and then you move on to the next area etc etc right so the fact that there's like a minimum time requirement when it comes to the um the battlegrounds activities added that to the time that it took you to do the five whatever playlist activities you've chosen to do to get your gold to focus one single engram you're looking at like what an hour plus play time per engram that's a lot of time to focus one thing that you might not even get what you want i mean that's my opinion you guys might feel differently about it it sounds like you do but i think that's a little excessive well, I mean, I mean, like the the five charges are for like the tier three, so it's like it makes sense that it takes more to get one of those done. But yeah, like like the whole the whole yeah, thing getting the charges shouldn't be that much of a pain, right? Yeah, but the whole thing this season just seemed like too much work for not enough benefit. Like exactly. I felt like I was, I was doing a lot of a lot. Like I understand the loop of you know go go do a, a, a playlist activity and then come back and go do the thing you want to do, or you know the thing for the season. But it just, fe- I don't know, this season it just feels, and I sort of feel like this way about Warmind too, and I think part of it is just my lack of time to play. I don't have the time to put, you know, endless hours into this. It just feels like a longer amount of stuff to do before I can get to what I want to do. You know, mm-hmm. or it, it seems like, you know, I, I'm i running out of time. You know, like Nineteen said, you know, running out of time to get the things you're trying to get done because you, you're spending so much time doing other things, and I don't know. It's... It doesn't feel that satisfying. You know, as a more casual player, it doesn't feel as satisfying to me to run that loop. Exactly. I feel I'm I'm of the same mind. I just have more of a reason why I don't like it. <laughs> I just think it's too long to focus on Ingram. You know? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, same thing. I mean, the whole thing, it, it, it's all a time sink. And I don't, I, I don't enjoy that time sink. Mm-hmm. Just to go do an Ingram. Like, I, I would, you know, I would like a, a primary scout rifle. I'd like a kinetic scout rifle. Yeah, I've got a couple of night watches and the exotics, blah, blah, blah. But if you're going to make, you know, the scout rifles, one of the things they need to take down champions, give me a way to farm scout rifles in the season. Make scout rifles a drop that I can get. For, I mean, I know I can drop them out in the world, blah, whatever. But like, why wasn't one of the Engrams a scout rifle? That would have been nice. I can get all the battlegrounds weapons from the Engrams, from the, the Umbral Engrams, but I can't get a scout rifle drop out of it why not? not not unless you focus uh season of the arrivals and you get the is it the night watch that came back yeah the night watch yeah, yeah it's probably the one of the ones i don't have unlocked yet because again i've got the like the three things it wants me to do for battleground so far sidearm sidearm smg the sniper rifle bow and rocket launcher literary fusion rifle so i've got those three unlocked again i don't have the other ones unlocked for weaponry so I mean, the only other th- one, scout rifle that you can get, which I use quite a lot in the uh, Lost Sectors, was the one from the Iron Banner, which, again, only comes up every four weeks when Iron Banner's around, and you have a chance at getting them as a, an end game drop or plowing your tokens into Saladin. Yeah, I've got one of those, and it's just a terrible... It has one of the iron perks on it that's just terrible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, got, I've got one that's got one of the iron perks on it, but it's also got... I think it's rapid hit on it. So it kind of, if I'm hitting the crits on the champions in the lost sector, it negates some of that um, reload mm-hmm. speed, which is, it, and it works quite well. So yeah. I use that one. But I know what you mean. Yeah, if if they're asking you to do those things in the lost sectors with those weapons, or not even lost sectors, just in general, like the like we said with the, um, the grandmasters, with the champions and that, then these things need to be kind of more readily available more accessible yes yeah, yeah, yeah. i've got my i've got my randy's throwing knife for my patreon lost causes <laughs> both are now sunset so it's like oh, i had you can't use 
where I want to use them. Both of those go. Yeah, I don't have to get a replacement, which just again, and you know, scout rifles is just the thing that comes to mind because that's the one I'm like, okay, well, I have this, I have like, you know, two scout rifles because I want to use an exotic bow if I'm going in with you know bow overload. I want to use a good bow, so okay, I'm going to use the non-exotic scout rifle because that's a better option. And yeah, I just it just feels like I'm always a little mismatched on what the champions are and then what weaponry I have to take down those champions. Like, yeah, I've got something that'll work, but I don't have what I prefer to have or a decent roll of it. And yeah, it's like, it, you know, it, we're six weeks in the season and I don't have a good path forward to get that yet. Yeah. And, and, you know, building onto that, you know, what I do every season is the first things I buy on the season pass are all of the things for all of the champions. Right. So that's step one, you know, regardless of what weapons they have, you got to buy them all because it's going to be champion. No, but don't. what I was going to ask you is patron of lost causes. It's probably one of the best feeling scout rifles. Only because mine had um, the flint shot, it had explosive payload, and it had uh, full auto, right? So it was an amazing gun, especially in, in Gambit, believe it or not. I would shred Guardians with that. But this season, we don't have any high-impact scout rifles that roll with full auto uh, explosive rounds, do we? Genuinely asking. Not full auto. I Like I said, the one from... Where is it? The one from Iron Banner. If we can find it. Is it that one? Yeah, Guiding yeah, guiding one. Star? Guiding Light? Guiding something? Guiding Light is Pulse Rifle. I'm trying to remember the name of it, just so if people were going to go look through their collections. Guiding Sight. The Guiding Sight, which is the one from Iron Banner. Yeah. It's an impact of 67, uh, I think. that That's one my one anyway. Um. But like I said, I've got appended mag, rapid hit, and I've got iron grip, which massively improves the weapon stability at the cost of reload speed. But because I've got the rapid right. hit, that really does, that yeah. really does um, increase the stability and reload speed. But well, yeah, it's a slow firing and high damage cool. weapon. Because that's what made Patron of Lost Causes so good in my mind is you had the damage, you had the explosive payloads, and you had the full auto. It's like, I... Am a full auto B word that you'll just dolphin out anyway, right? No, I'm a full auto when it comes to scout rifles. Give me my full autos. I love it. Best part about a scout rifle. Yeah. Full auto Vorpal weapons the one I have on my Patreon Lost Causes, and that's what I miss. Yep. Vorpal weapon, that's that sounds pretty good too. But yeah, so you know, scout rifles this season overall were just really bad, you know. But Almost there is every that time that you can get from the raid, but you have to do the raid. What's the one from the new Deep Stone Crypt raid? Uh, is that okay. an energy one? Because that's yeah, the, that's, yeah the, that's the same marker type as the um. But it's, it's rapid fire, right? So again, you're not yeah. getting the damage. You you get a huge magazine if you get the right roll, right? But you're not getting the damage, and right. it doesn't come with explosive payload. And it's in the energy slot. That's the other problem because that's yeah. where that's where my exotic bows are sitting. You know, and that's the issue because I've got a good roll, trustee from the raid but yeah so i've got that you know i've got secondary you know things and that's a problem kinetic weapons is sort of my where i'm struggling this season i don't have the kinetic weapons i've got you know energy weapons till i'm blue what in the face got a kinetic bow would that help you out uh sort of are any of the bows kinetic are the yeah. Exotic kinetic yeah the one you get from the jimmy city oh that's right that one is a kinetic isn't yeah. it I yeah. was thinking the one that you can see through the walls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking they were all um, energy. The wish ender. That's the one, yeah. That's right. Yeah, no, I forgot, I forgot about the wish ender. Yeah, that would probably... Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, should, yeah I should take that. It's, it's, you know, it's 1100, so you can tell it gets used a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you, can, you, you can use, like, the Whispering Slab, which is a, a kinetic bow as well. If you well, do. he was talking more like the exotic or whatever, so he can use, you know, yeah. his scout rifle or some nonsense. But anyway, because yeah, he said that's where my exotic, you know, bows sit. And I was like, well, there, there's a kinetic exotic bow if you're looking for the bows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because I usually because I usually run the over, you know, you know, bow and a scout rifle, or you know, pulse and scout, depending on what the champion burns are or the champion, yeah, yeah, things are. And so I always have to go, okay, well, here's here's the subpar scout rifle, and then either TQs or Trinity Ghoul for the bow and go, okay, well, this, you know, the bows, right. I'm set, the bows are amazing this season, especially with the TQs and that catalyst. 
but yeah, a good uh, one for I think is it the unstoppable or overload one? So ones that just kind of regenerate their health. Mm-hmm. The monarch is a really really good bow because where it does the damage tick, yeah. even because you kind of get that delay from when you do hit them. Sometimes they don't stun you the the Le Monarch where it constantly ticks suddenly that last tick might knock them to stun them which is really quite good so as long as you're kind of getting the 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 Le Monarch uh, damage over time to kind of hit them it works really really well so you can get them to kind of stun pull out your rocket fire your rocket and then go back to Le Monarch and fire off a couple of the shots as long as you kind of I've found in that you know the, the legendary lost sector those overload ones just charge you down, especially those minotaurs. Mm-hmm. Really run at you, firing, 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 and you can't dodge. So Le Monarch at a distance is really, really helpful. But again, yeah. you, you kind of you need Le Monarch for that. I mean, yeah, because you haven't got you haven't got hand cannon mod this season, have you, for the overloads and that? Yeah, the hand I, cannon I, mod. I think because Thorn would have been quite good for that, or uh, Ariana's Vow. There's unstoppable hand. I can't remember. I feel like there's unstoppable hand hand this season. Is it unstoppable? Yeah. Uh, let me go look. Because... Let me have a look. Oh, so neither of you no. two have the game oh, yes. up. Yeah, you, you have unstoppable hand cannon. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you could probably use um, Thorn if you were. It's not primary. Had... Throw. The only the only special weapon we've got for any of the champions is shield piercing snipers. You know, so I mean, again, you're going to be running like double primaries, or you're going to have a whole team that each runs a, a primary for whatever boss you're looking to, or not boss, but champion you're looking to take down or whatever, right? But for most activities, like you were saying, you got to run two primaries. You got to run a bow and a freaking uh, scout, or a bow and a freaking hand cannon, or whatever. Right? right, you know, you, you gotta run your primary submachine submachine guns. The other one with the overload, so it's overload is submachine gun or bows this season. You've got mm-hmm. unstoppable, which is pulse rifle or hand cannon, and then scouts are the only thing that do the um uh, barrier champions. Are, they cost oh, you can six. get, yeah, yeah, you can get sniper later six. on, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah, why would you use the, the sniper rifle when you can get a scout rifle that does the same kind of thing? It was on PC that are rocking that. It's like, what did you give up for that? Because <laughs> that's a lot. Six is a lot, you know. Mm. Basically, on whatever piece of armor they've got that on, I think it's the arms, right? You've got your 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 modifier for recovery or whatever you put on there, and then the sniper, and that's it. There's your there's your tent, you know. <laughs> you don't get to put anything else. <laughs> Criminy, that's too expensive for my blood. Uh, another thing that I wanted to kind of point out was, you know, that we've had the presage mission come up each week, and Seriously? you can go and do, yes, <laughs> the hidden mission that's on the Tangled Shore yeah, to get the Dead Man's Tail Exotic Scout Rifle. Now, what I didn't realise was every week you Abby Hour puts out these, um, go and find the hidden caches on the ship, and there looked to be like about fifteen of these caches that you can get, and I didn't realize that it's actually tied to the law that you can get from the ship, which let me just look it up. So, sorry, there's 12. Uh, the, the law for it is the captain's log. Now, if you've done it each week for the last couple of weeks, you should have about five or six entries. No, I think actually, I believe it's five because I think it's only, it wasn't there the first week. So if you've done it each week and, and gone and got your Dead Man's Tower each week and just got your random roll, you should, every week that you complete it, you get an entry for the captain's log for this law. And what that means is that you then have five caches that you can open. So if you've done it each week for the last five weeks, you can go into the mission and open each cache each time. So you can go to the first cache and open it, then go to the next one, open that one. Because what I didn't realize is that it's tied to these law pages. So I can't go, I wasn't able to open five this week until I'd actually completed the mission. So I opened four whilst I was in the mission because I already had law page four, completed the mission, then went back into it, went and found where the chest location is and opened that. So it's actually tied to the the locate, the completing it each week. So this is probably something that you've missed out on, Parody, if you haven't done it at all or only done it once 
Nope, done it not at all. So I've missed on all the things. You don't have the scout rifle at all? Nope. Haven't even what? stepped that mission. What? It's missing what? out. Bro. Missing. Why does this surprise Bro. you? Because the scout rifle is amazing. It, it is it is an extremely, extremely good scout rifle. Well, I mean, okay, I might be overhyping it a little bit. I personally think it's a very, very good scout rifle from the damage standpoint, from a from a Accuracy. I mean, it, it, it's good overall, man. I mean, it's just. I, I don't. It is. With no, 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 especially with the catalyst, bro. And you, parody. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. What, what part of filthy casual are you not understanding? But even if you're <laughs> casual, dude, it's easy to do. Hell, you could probably solo the damn thing. There's no time limit you on can, it. You can solo it. I, I do it every week solo. Yeah. I, I've got to the point where I only did the. The I um, it faster version. You. <laughs> huh? the the first week i did it um i soloed it right uh and yeah. you're like oh my son did it by himself yeah okay did. Well, well what i'm saying is you know the whole boss at the end kind of a bag of not good words to say so <laughs> no but it's quite easy to kind of damage him jump back up run across to the other side jump back down fire at him run back no, across you kind true, of just bait him from one side to the other <clears throat> he did take a damage where you jump out of the way of the fire, but the game's like, did you really? Yes, I did. Yeah, we're going to kill you anyway. Yeah! It's probably because you're playing on PC. So yeah, every week I've I've gone in and soloed it uh, on the on the normal version anyway. Good luck with that prestige. Cause... No, I mean, the, the prestige of I've taken a fire team, but I, I'm not really concerned. I mean, I will try and get the emblem before the end of the season or before it actually goes away. But I think with the the law pages, it doesn't matter that you haven't you you don't have until the end of the season. You have until the end of season fifteen, I think it is, to collect all of the hidden caches on the ship, which right. is quite nice. That just that I thought it kind of I didn't realise if it was general knowledge that people needed to complete it to get the pages for the law book, which then opened the different caches on the ship. And I just didn't know if a lot of people knew that or not. Gotcha. Uh, but just so you know, because you confuse me, you probably confuse some other people out there too. You said it's not until the end of the season; it's until the end of season fifteen. What are you talking about? I said the end of season fifteen. Yeah, you said it's not until the end of the season; it's until the end of the season fifteen. Oh, it doesn't we, normally the end of the season. Yeah, normally things disappear at the end of the season. But if you actually look on, um, collecting the. Where is it? I, if I can find it. If you go into your triumphs and look under Season of the Chosen, there is... I think it's under... I think it's under the exotic quest of Season of the Chosen. And Bound in Memory is the find all the pages of the captain's log. And there are 12 of them to get. And that also then goes in alongside the Season of the Chosen Tucked Away Triumph, which is discover each of the Glycon smuggling compartments, which is these hidden caches. And it says that this expires at the end of Season 15. So it's a Triumph score of 5 to get that, and 25 in total for the lore pages, I believe. Um, you get 2 per step, and probably 1 for the final one. So gotcha. you, you, there's 30 Triumph score to actually get but you've got until the end of season 15. So you can do these 12 completions over a matter of time. The only reason I've gone in each week is that I just want to see if I can get a different role of the gun. But it wasn't until I kind of watched and listened to all of Abby Hour's video to understand that these are actually tied to the law pages. So because I'd done X amount of law pages, I could then go back in and just go da 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 and knock them all out. So if you've done several completions but haven't done the caches you can just go in and pick up the caches for the first four or five weeks which is quite handy i see that makes more sense hmm. okay well um now i think it's time for a response report roundup response a report a roundup
So Destiny News says the Gilded Conqueror title requires you to complete all six Grandmaster Nightfalls during the season of The Chosen. Starting April 20th, the Grandmaster Nightfall playlist will become available featuring these six uh, Grandmaster Nightfalls. Uh, Destiny News, new heir apparent exotic catalyst. Catalyst for the heir apparent. If you don't have the heir apparent, this does not concern you. Um, if you do... Which will probably be available again in Guardian Games, which it's an exotic heavy machine gun, which gives you an overshield once it's spun up. I mm-hmm. believe, and you can't zoom in to fire it. Shield, it's specifically arc, but yeah. Oh, yes. Um, I mean, I don't know why they specified arc, but apparently it, it must matter for something. I guess mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, maybe for PvP or something, somebody with a arc gun pops your shield faster. Or some I, I don't know. All right. Point is, is Guardian Games, uh, this year or this time around, you're gonna get the catalyst for that gun if you've got it. If you don't have the gun, hopefully they'll give it to you and then you can get the catalyst for it. Yeah, there are some new ghost shells, uh, in honor of Guardian Games. One looks like a water bottle, the other looks like a tennis ball. I'm kind of feeling the tennis ball one. I don't know if that's weird. It looks, looks kind of cool. It looks like Andre Agassi. It looks like what? Andre Andre Agassi. Andre Agassi, you know, oh. his, head, his headband. Uh, uh, is that a famous tennis player? Oh God! Sorry, I'm not really. In it. Forge Star Trek. Does that that re- that any better a reference for you? Oh, oh yeah, oh, Jordy. No, that's his name. Ha ha ha! I know Jordy. I also know Reading Rainbow guy. You could e- either one of those would have sufficed. Um, who just <laughs> was not Andre Agassi. Uh, apparently I don't and I've watched every episode of Star Trek so that makes me feel even worse I'm so sorry for all you Trekkies out there uh, Bungie Help Trials of Osiris will be re-enabled at 10am yada 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 no fire team rejoin function has been fully disabled we discussed that due to an issue we with fire team week. yeah we did uh, due to an issue with fire team rejoin function I tried this blah, 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 blah. Um, this guy, I dyslexic says, why can't you just disable the ability to join back in the game? Seems better than disabling the game mode again. This I guess last week. Last week. Question. Yeah. Uh, DMZ replied at this time, we aren't able to disable rejoin functionality. Apparently they are now. I'm not reading that whole thing just to say it all again. Okay. Uh, can you make sure messenger adept no. is the when it comes to listen, what? Listen. I know you don't want to read it again, but there was a lot of questions last week that were, why can't you just disable the ability to rejoin back in the game rather than disabling trials? And DMG tried to explain that at that time last week, they weren't able to disable the rejoin functionality specifically on trials, because if they were to do that, it would disable the feature game-wide and have a far greater impact on players than disabling the playlist for a few weekends. So I just thought we'd kind of get that out. Because a lot of people... It's idiotic because trials. now they, they've disabled the function that the, the streamers have been talking about for a long yeah, time. That, to... You know? And it's just like, hey, congratulations. They were able to do it, and then they put in a fix that allowed them to be able to do it is what Night Demon's trying to say. Yeah. yeah. I get what Night Demon's trying to say. What I'm trying but to say... But you didn't explain it to me. Well, you skipped over it. Because who cares? It's It's over. It's done. Great. I know, but it's just it's just useful to know. All right, guys. Apparently, last week, Bungie couldn't disable rejoin without killing it for the whole game. We've explained it now. We've explained it now. That's the thing. Blah. Blah. And because of that, Spectre got quite upset on Twitter, didn't he? I don't know. Did he? Well, he asked the question to DMG. I'm going to guess you have a thing to read right in front of you there that will answer this question. But, because you know, last, last week the messenger adept was the flawless right. trials chest, read it. and if yeah. you didn't get onto trials quicker, it was just disabled last week. Uh, yeah. Okay. So can you make the messenger adept uh, as the reward when it comes back? Otherwise, the uh, rotation might cause it to be a while. Good luck fixing. Uh, DMG says we'll be working with the team to ensure rewards aren't missed this season due to delays. Definitely want players to have chances. For the hand cannon and lower wind areas, not to mention the messenger adepts up for grabs. Uh, Rezo, or I Rezo. Is that I Rezo? Because this week, the, well, actually, I don't know what the flawless is this week. Is it the messenger adept? 
I only know the three win reward this week. Um, I don't know what the fall list is because I never do because I don't care. <laughs> Although we are hosting a Destiny podcast, so maybe one of us should look that up to see what it is. Um, in the meantime, I Rezo Chip Chib Chibi Kim. Oh my God! How do you say your name? Mm-hmm. Um, Chibi Kim. Yeah, is anyone getting this on Chibi both Kim PCs? Is the best. Oh. Uh, it says, yep, it's an own issue, and we're currently looking into it. It's the whole, uh, you can't really see what's in the post message, so you hit the back button issue. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. This, you read from the bottom up or the top down, this last one? Read them both and see what's going oh. Okay, okay, so he's replying to this. Okay, so, um, some name in letters from a foreign country that I can't read has asked, uh, DMG and Cosmo in the TWAB. It says update three one 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 is coming March thirtieth and twenty third, which is correct. Ah, yes, that is kind of important. Um, bad news. I got the date wrong on the update three one 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 in the when the eyes of tomorrow fixes comes yeah, this is from Cosmo. Good news is that it's coming out next Tuesday on March 23rd instead of March 30th. And unless you have something else for me, that's it, gentlemen. That is it for you, yes. Now, I'm going to drop you a little video for you to watch solely. And I want you to mute yourself and I want you to come back and give us some feedback on this video. I got to mute so myself. So this is a little bit of... We, I don't want you laughing all the way while we're talking about oh. other stuff. Okay, I can, I can, I can dig with some funny. Yeah, I, I think you'll appreciate. I think you'll appreciate this video if I can find it. There Reading myself Check. here. Are you gonna put it in uh, in podcast stuff. I, I I will send it to you a private message. Oh, how swanky! Is swanky even a word? Am I thinking of swanky? Or am I thinking of Twinkie because I'm a fatty? Swinky is a word. I don't know if Swinky is a <laughs> That one swinky. I think is respawn original. Uh, that's, that's a respawn original right there, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I have the link. I'm See, going radio silent. You go and watch that and come back and tell us. And now we're going to have a minute of silence. Give your ears a break from respawn's lovely voice. <laughs> I guess we're on to tips, tricks, guides, and builds. And we sent Respawn off to do a little bit of research on a video. Well, not research. It's it's quite a funny video, but it ties into what I'm about to explain to you guys. So this week on the Guardian Downcast, they had a really fantastic guest called Misum777, an unknown electro. And it was really interesting to listen to, and I do recommend it, and I will put the link in the show notes for these guys. They've built an inspiring Destiny community around their clan and a YouTube channel. And it's quite unique of the way that you've gone about this. And what's actually quite interesting, it was something that I'd never heard before. And it's mainly to do with PvP. And I know you, a lot of people like kind of turned off with PvP and all the different guides that are out there for PvP. But... The, the mentality that they, they came up with, or the idea that they came up with, was a kind of wolf pack. That they, they work in as a team when they go into PvP activities for trials, for even for 6v6. And they came up with this idea of this wolf pack with Alpha, Bravo, uh, Omega, and... Gamma. Uh, Gamma, that was it, yeah. And the way that they kind of the the way you kind of play your game style around uh, kind of suited to you would then be how they kind of adapt their kind of wolf pack to play against um other teams and it was quite interesting to listen to them on the podcast and it was wasn't something i'd kind of heard of before so i went away and had a look at their youtube channel yeah i, I have kind of their channel but i'm about th- halfway three quarters of the way through the episode yeah i, I really appreciated their because they sort of like group players in, into these four groups sort of like by your play style. It's sort of like, like hey, it, it's not so much like we're going to give you a role, we're going to tell you what to do. It's like, how do you play the game? You know, it, it basically, it, you know, it's like you join the clan and they're like, how do you play the game? What is your style? Okay, your style is this. You're, you're, you're sort of fit into one of these four archetypes. 
and they sort of, you know, they build their mm-hmm. Wolfpack team sort of around those four archetypes, like, you know, Alpha being the, like, as I think he, as he puts it, he's like, those, those are the shotgun apes. They're super aggressive, in your face, up front, always in the front lines. And the beta player is sort of the, yeah. like, the flexible, like, utility infielder. Like, sort of any role the beta can sort of step into as I can sort of be what you need me to be in the moment. You know, whatever gap I can I can be, I, you, you need, I can fill. And they're saying a lot of, like, you know, the, the really great, like, trial scenes and things are sort of all beta players. Not beta thinking, oh, you're not, you're not as good as the alpha, but just beta in terms of, you all step into the role you need to play in the moment. So you're a better team, not just a better individual player, not to say these p- people aren't great. Yeah, but it was really interesting because he also, he also you know, called out, I just want to mention, you know, he calls out like, you know, four content creator examples as like, like, uh, you know, esoteric is like an alpha type player. Cause he's always like in the front lines, in your face, you know, beating you across the head. And like, and I can't remember who the other examples were off the top of my head, but, but you know, he it gave work. Cammy yeah. Cakes, Frostbolt, True Vanguard, Astacross. Yeah. And yeah, they kind of go into having a look at their gameplay and explain the reasons why they are this type of player or what they're doing in that video at that time because most of the, the good players can dip and dive into these various different roles. They could just be the gammas on that team for that game when you're looking at that gameplay but then in the next video where they're highlighting a, a, a certain build or a certain weapon they've then turned into an alpha which was quite interesting to see and on their youtube channel they have tactics community sketches and streams so they do go over some builds and some ideas that they they've kind of come up with by themselves some of the stuff that they discuss in their communities the sketches are just kind of funny videos and then streams are some of the things that they've kind of streamed, you know, gameplay and stuff. So there's something for everyone there and, you know, props to Gator for finding him because uh, I wouldn't have kind of ever seen these guys until they maybe become a little bit bigger or it was linked by somebody else or because I don't understand why, you know, I hadn't found these on YouTube or with the, the amount of searches that I do for Destiny gameplays and the amount of creators that I, I kind of find. But it was really interesting to see. And I've sent Respawn away to watch a video called um, the Complete Destiny Crucible Training Video. And it's a really, really funny video. It's like a, a 1950s American um, <laughs> information video on how to play the crucible so it's not very serious at all but i was killing myself laughing and i just wanted his kind of reaction to it so hope it's only a 10 minute video so hopefully he should be back to share his views on that there was another one called if varix works in an office destiny 2 animation again they <laughs> use some of the dialogue from destiny 1 with varix quite funny to watch but a couple of videos that i will highlight from their their stuff that i haven't dropped into our our feed yet is they go over the alpha beta gamma and omega in a kind of quick video which is about 12 minutes long and kind of give you examples of as to cross cami true vanguard and frostbolt and what they kind of fit in at that point and then there's also another video that kind of goes along with that which is it part of their yeet cast it's a kind of a, a long form podcast 37 minutes long but it's on youtube and it helps you kind of identify what role you are in your kind of wolf pack. So again, that was really interesting to to listen to. Um, I haven't kind of figured out what I am yet because I think I I'm one of these players that kind of I'm I am a kind of lone wolf, and I kind of depending on what I'm playing as or yeah whatever kind of subclass or class I'm on it depends on what i'm actually playing as because if i'm playing competitive and i've got my hunter i'm then staying back and i'm more like the i think it was the omega where i'm kind of just supporting from a distance with my Le monarch and if they're getting too aggressive i pull out you know my grenades or my um shatter dive or my hand cannon whereas if i'm uh, like i've have been for the last week playing as my titan on my solar subclass using the yotun and then moving in with um with my hammer titan to to do to kills you know with the solo abilities it's i've then kind of been the beta player because i've kind of just been i've been aggressive but i've kind of been following another guy and just kind of supporting them kind of thing so it depends on you know, you may just be one class or you may do all the things. I don't think I've ever been an alpha player. 
maybe in, in certain situations when I panic, I may have turned into an alpha player with shotguns. So yeah, the, the, they were really two interesting videos. And like I said, um, there was another one that they had. Let me if I can find it. So I'll also link the, the video that um, Respawn's gone to have a look at, which is quite funny. And the other one. So they, they talked about this on the Guardian Downcast, that they had a video that they were going to put out where they were going to show you the best stasis fragments for the behemoth titans using whisper of chains and the icefall mantles because it gives you 400 health points and this was i mean they, sh they show you in game literally throwing down uh, a nice grenade so you've got a wall kind of near you so you take the the damage you take less damage don't you from standing near one of these the, the ice balls yeah i mean standing near yeah any any of those ice will take less damage yeah and then pop in the icefall mantles you can they were showing you you can take like a golden gun <laughs> shot you can take a, a headshot yeah Here he is. yeah they were talking about that yeah like you can take like everything practically it was wow. what, what happened yeah. what that's right we're talking about a video so i will link that video in the show notes but respawn is now back to give us his take on the video that he's uh, he's just gone away and watched 10 out of 10 completely accurate <laughs> <laughs> what the hell dude oh my god it was ridiculous and all true like it's just <sighs> so respawn what i need you to do is go away this week and listen to last week's guardian down podcast because it had these guys on and did it you know i'm actually sort of curious to get your take because they he, you know he sort of explains like sort of like very like very loosely it's it's like you know not like loosely based on like American military like, tactics and strategy. Yeah, I'd be sort of curious to see you know you know sort of what your what your take on that is and, and yeah I thought it was interesting you know for framing the game around you know each of you have a role to play on the team and sort of what of your natural play style is you know that sort of you know fit into that role people sort of know what to expect from you in that role and you know that's but see that that's how I play the problem with that is that's good for games like Call of Duty right. That's not good for games like Destiny, where if you pie the corner to make sure that nobody's going to headshot you, and all of a sudden there's a Nova bomb, it it doesn't mesh. <laughs> well, I mean, part of what they're talking about, like in the strategy, is like you know, like certain players, you know, like an alpha type player would be like up front, you know, shotgunning in your face, and then I think once it was like you know, like the gamma style players, like are the ones sitting back with the sniper rifles, are back, you know, in in the back lines, you know, providing Overwatch and cover you. So even if the Nova bomb comes in, it may not hit all of you at once because not all of you are you know standing up front holding hands you know and they talk about you know building building your teams based on based on those different player types you know so you don't all get destroyed at least you know hopefully yeah i mean again that's that's the whole military tactics like you know you don't want to stand too close that way a grenade doesn't take everybody out but like as far as like solo play you know like you're not you're, you're not always going to be going in with a fire team right most of the time people play crucible well, yeah. like, no, this you know, this idea is that you are, you do go in as a fire team, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, that's the idea is is you know you're sort of building that wolf pack around you and sort of each know you know what role in that wolf pack you're serving. So yeah, yeah, it's not applicable to every single thing, but just it's you know it's taking some of those ideas and strategies and you know applying them to destiny. You know, not obviously not a perfect one to one for real life or anything, but just always right. you, know, you know approaching it from that from that perspective. And another video that they put out was a build around the Omnioculus for the Hunters and giving you five buffs in one build. Again, a really, really interesting. I know a lot of other people have kind of done this, but using the Rat King, the, um, the exotic sidearm, <sighs> that kind of, I, when you get a kill, turns you invisible. Did you watch that video where all six of them went into the... Well, some activity, what was it? Iron Banner. That's right. All six went into the Iron Banner with Rat Kings and that armor piece. And although it was a hilarious video, it did teach me that <laughs> it's a really bad build to take it. That, to that Iron was a Banner. Fallout, wasn't it? Yeah. That was Fallout and yeah. Cool Guy. Yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> it's like hilarious, but they, they got mercyed like almost every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Fun, but not useful. Yeah, right. So yeah, the their channel is the Dream Team. So TDT is is the name of their That's their clan so and their. Familiar. I've heard of that before. 
you may have played them on PS4 because they are a PS4 gaming clan that treats each other like family and pushes each other to become the best of all of them. They huh. sharpen iron with iron. We grow and persevere to become greater than the potato we once were. This <laughs> clan was first started in Destiny with four players who become the founding members of the Dream Team and grew as new members joined the clan. Its growth helped the admins build a structure in a clan to create systems such as rankings, code of conduct, and resources provided to give members tools and experiences like no other clan. And Look, they do man, have a Discord you're link. You're going to start your clan out with a code of conduct. You're already wrong. Uh, no. No. They're, 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 the way they approach the clan is not like, you know, is, is the exact opposite of how we approach the clan. Their clan is very, you know, very selective, very together. Like they... You know, they've built this whole idea and built this whole thing up, you know, where it's not just everyone can get in the door. So it's, it, it's, it's interesting. It was interesting. That, again, it was really good to hear sort of that long term, you know, that long form explanation of the clan and their, you know, philosophy on it. I just, you know, it was, it, it was interesting. So, yeah, go and check out the Guardian Downcast and then go and check out the Dream Team YouTube channel, which I'll link by uh, Meesum777. And he's also got another external link for his second channel as well. So other uh, videos that are featured this week, we have Brave X Hero on how to improve in PvP, five must-use tips. Again, going over five. getting better in Crucible, and mainly for Respawn. Hey. Now, Respawn, I know this is something that's been troubling you for the last couple of weeks. Why should you be using the Aeon Exotics? And guess what? Eero has got a video for you. Explaining oh, the, why. that video where it's like they might actually be meta video. They might actually, they might actually work in certain situations, basically. Yeah. So check Eero out um, because this may be something that you want to rock in PVE activities and nope. work as a fire team. Um, Cheese Forever has got a, a couple of good videos. So he goes over the Infinite Frostbite March 2021 all class method. So if you are soloing the opening of the Deepstone Crypt and getting the chest from that, he's got a video on that for all classes. He's also got a video on how to do the closed door fix for the first encounter because apparently there's sometimes there's a, an issue with the door closing and you not being able to get through. Mm -hmm. And then he goes over why Sepkis is not a boss and what weapons you can use to do extra damage on him. Wallcliff Coil being one of those which um, helps with in Grandmasters, I guess, Eyes doing tomorrow. more damage on him. Yeah, he does uh, Eyes of Tomorrow. So, yeah, it's, it's really weird that he's not actually a boss. I think he's more of a vehicle for some reason. But go and check out those videos. There's three there. Do more damage because he's a vehicle? Can I, can I ride him? Yeah. yeah. You absolutely can. You could if you, you wanted not to. Like yeah, it is, yeah. But... you can jump on top of him. Sure. Oh. Um, Fallout plays as the um, the Gambit playlist has kind of been bumped up with Gambiteers all farming their bottom dollars because there's been an increased drop rate. Plays has got his video on the bottom dollar God rolls if you are interested in his take on what you want to look out for. True Vanguard has come across the Huckleberry for the second time and how well it's doing at the moment on Titans with the exotic legs, the Peacekeepers. So this helps ready your submachine guns faster and it auto reloads them when stowed. And he uh, was really enjoying <laughs> the synergy with that. And apparently there's a couple of hidden perks that he kind of points out with the Peacekeepers that I didn't realize. Something like it gives you a plus 30 or 50 in mobility speed as a hidden perk. So you don't necessarily need to max out your stability, uh, not stability, max out your mobility because this gives you a, like a hidden kind of perk in that. So check out that video if you are interested in trying this. And I think I've kind of, I did a half a build around this where I was using the um, uh, the Terraba. I was using the Terraba and using the, um, the, terrible. the Peacekeepers. The, but the problem is when you stow the Terraba, you lose the perks from it. So it was, it, oh, yes, it was helping when I wanted to kind of ready it faster. And then I was on a, a terror away when I was actually getting lots of kills. But if I did actually run out and I wanted to reload, I would kind of lose the the buff if I did stow it. So maybe this would be one that I kind of look at next week for Iron Banner. You mean Iron Banner's coming back next week? Oh, my God. 
I think it is. Let me just check my. Yep, yep, it's definitely back next week. It's on as Palm Pilot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Abby Hour yeah. has the week five presage chess location for your tucked away triumph. And then I think that's it for me. Yeah, that, that, that's all, all the tips, tricks, guys, and bills. So uh, going, yeah. This week, yeah. I, I can't highly recommend the, the dream team more this week. The, the vi some of the videos are fantastic. So some of the comedy videos and some of their actual proper kind of build videos and the the explanation on the, in this wolf pack is is really good. Good. I might check them out. Maybe they'll take me when Frozen gets rid of me. No, they definitely won't take you. <laughs> no, well, definitely. because of the community standard guideline. No, wait, that wasn't it. Whatever yeah. would you. Yes, no, that's precisely it. It's all right. There's always exceptions to every rule. I think the exception to this rule is we've we've made it our requisite number of hours this week. So, thank you for joining us. Your Titans are parody of Night Demon. Your Hunter is the one response in real life. One of these days, we'll find our lore scribe, not Arf. He's he's out in the wisps in the world collecting lore and bringing stories back for us. You can mm. email the show at two Titans and a Hunter at hotmail.com. Find the show on Twitter at two Titans underscore Hunter. We're on Instagram and Facebook. You guessed it, two Titans and a Hunter. You can find all your favorite guardians on Xbox Live and respawn on PC. And uh, Night Demon could be a new PC uh, trials carry guy once he gets his PC. Oh. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, oh. everywhere fine podcasts are sold. And with that, gents, say goodbye. This is au revoir. So uh, are we are we going to be in the market for a new uh, lore scribe? I mean, it, you, you, you don't show up to work without calling in. You usually get fired. He's not showed up for uh, how many weeks now? I mean, are we still sending this guy a paycheck? Well, I mean, to be fair, he's he showed up because you just, you know, you got usurped and replaced. So does that mean we have to replace both of you now with competent people? When did I get replaced? By not our foot the lore. <laughs> oh, with the lore. I see. <laughs> I was thinking like hunter replacement. I'm like, he's not even a hunter. What are you talking about? I see. I see. I mean, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying, like, we, we, we've started to include lore in the podcast and haven't had lore in a month or more. You know? So, I mean, yeah. um, as, as we discussed earlier, you have to be British to do lore. That's the rule. Well, exactly what you said earlier, right? So, apparently, there's another British guy who's uh, aiming for the part. I mean, all British speakers must read lore. That's just that's just the rule. And unfortunately, since our British speaker can't well, I can, speak, I can well, just read. We, we we need to find a different one. No, I can read you lore. I can know. Like, I'm, I'm going to read you some lore. Let me read yeah, you some the lore. The idea is to find it first okay. and then read it. <laughs> then, then you read it in the with the smooth jazz for for Night Demon's lore bedtime story. Oh my god! Right. That's. I mean, seriously, you can, you, can serve two markets. Right. you can serve two markets, both the podcast and the OnlyFans. Absolutely. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you, you forgetting can... we have that thing. So I mean, this we don't is... have that thing. Shh, shh, shh. I'm going to do a reading. Shh. Oh. Shh. Welcome to the Night Demon Solo Hour, where I read you pages from the law book, The Captain's Lock. Entry one. I don't know that word. <laughs> what an amazing start! <laughs> Phenomenal. Uh, oh god, it started off so smoothly. In the very first word of the very first lore, I don't know that word. I'm crying. There's a tear in my eye right now. Where's oh. off? Off. Oh. <laughs>